Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us on this crazy, fun, beautiful night. How, how are you guys doing? Watchful, how are you, brother? Doing good. Today's my busy day, so running around doing school stuff. Um, kind of, There's a lot of disasters <laughs> going on in so many different places. We've got, I mean, like there's fires everywhere. Uh, the one that's most relevant to us is stuff that's going on on YouTube. Uh, and, uh, you know, laws that are being passed, which I'm sure we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. So some changes coming as a result of that. But, uh, other than that, I haven't had a whole lot of time to like get into details and news and what's going on. I, I keep seeing a lot of stuff go fly by. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's been an okay day. <laughs> uh, Dr. Thrap, yeah. how are you? Good brother. Hey, doing awesome, man. Uh, it's, uh, Beautiful day to serve the Lord. It's always hot here, so I apologize about wearing the shirt. But, uh, <laughs> if I wear sleeves, even short sleeves, I'm just sweating all the time. You know, so I'll be I understand. Sweating. And then you get it on your hands. You're trying to work the computer, water and computers. I've had the mouse pad go bad more than once because I get a little sweat on my hands and start working the computer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, better to hopefully people forgive me there for saying staying cool. But I, I guess you dress like that too, so it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, I over I overheat pretty easily, so I that's how reason I dress. I don't like to pour sweat. Mm. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, go ahead, you know, whatever you guys like to share, and then whenever you want me to jump in, I'll jump in. But yeah, I I think the audience would like to hear your uh, your uh, about this new law. Maybe you know whatever you want to start with. You, guys you know, it's with. um, you know, what's funny about us is we just wing it every night just about it's uh <laughs> you know we probably shouldn't tell folks that but that's we just fly by we fly by the spirit really i mean Amen. we just well, we just operate what comes to us and uh we like the natural dialogue and just general conversation and the the fellowship with everybody so um, yeah i i know we should probably be more structured um oh, but I don't, that, I don't necessarily that's not in our cards yet yeah, we're we're, uh, we're actually working towards that for so <laughs> I don't think Christopher's properly representing the intention of the show. Uh, yeah. We're both very busy, uh, and the show keeps us really busy. We don't have uh, we have a lot of help, uh, you know, with volunteers and stuff like that. But you know, our our objective for the show is we have very specific plans. Uh, for the structure. Yeah. Matter of fact, we actually were starting to develop multiple formats. Uh, so like, you know, for, exa for example, a format where we have a guest and uh, the rules and procedures for how that happens and goes down. But uh, there's another format where we have more than one guest. You know, that the, 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 you know, the way that the show goes changes. Uh, you know, because you want to make sure that everybody who's on the screen is there for a reason and has an opportunity to provide input. Uh, you also yeah. have format for like teaching type stuff where we want to get into depth on things. So it's like we're we're learning this as we go. So there is a lot of flying by the seat of our pants. But the objective is, is to get uh, to improve every every single episode, you know, find something yeah. that we can improve, get better so that, you know, we can find what people like. Uh, what they don't like, what works for us, what doesn't work for us. And like we've said many times before, our objective is to do this full time eventually. Uh, so as we get closer to being able to do that, it will get more structured. Uh, and, you know, we want to we want to make this um, as pleasant for our subscribers as possible. We want to provide as much value as we can. So. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I fully agree that this is a good way to do things the way you're doing it now. If you uh, if you get too structured, you know it becomes like a religion all of a sudden, and uh, you know that's really, oh yeah, we don't want to do that. Religion. Yeah, it's about that's it's well about said. Relationship. Yeah, it's about relationship. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And there's a bumper sticker yeah. that says, uh, and one of my huh. best best friends nowadays, Rich Callis uh, he has uh, he has that on his uh, saying on his Skype. You're allowed to put a little saying on your Skype, you know. And so every time I call him and talk to him, it says it's not about religion, it's about relationship. You know, he's talking about Jesus. Amen. I think it might say Jesus, it's not about religion, it's about relationship, something like that. <laughs> but it's and, so uh, true. It's, uh, 
Yeah, um, uh, is, uh, awesome, awesome, yeah, very true. Christopher, is my image blurry to you? It looks really blurry to me. Uh, yeah, it's very pixelated. I'm going to I'm gonna hang up and call back. I think I'm getting right. eCam limited. I'll be right back. Okay. 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 Yeah, so um, how, how's yeah, so the weather that, out there? Is it hot out there, Dr. Thrapp? Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably... The lowest we get it regularly is about this time of year is probably 85, the lowest in the middle of the night, just before sunrise. And Jeez. then, uh, yeah, and then it'll be uh, like right now it's probably 90 or 95 with with close to, you know, 80 percent humidity. Uh, you know, sometimes it's 100 percent humidity because you know if it's starting to rain somewhere right around you, then it's pretty much 100 percent of humidity, which. I can see rain up there right now. Uh, it might be 95% here, but it's a little ways away, so maybe we're 80, but yeah. it's in that range. It's in that range. But, uh, yeah, excellent. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, religion is not the way to everlasting life. And I think uh, Peter, excuse me, I think uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews and Romans both are pretty good at pointing that out. It's about relationship. Uh, it's about, you know, oneness with God. And I think Jesus made it. You know, he says the Bible says that he's the one that revealed God. Uh, he revealed the heart of God, really. That it's all about yeah. love and about relationship, and not so much about this ritual, or that ritual, or this observing that day or observing that day. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, there is there is good evidence that Jesus did set up a new holy day, or at least a holy uh, communion. Let's say it that way. He he instigated. The only thing he instigated, a lot of people think, well, maybe he said celebrate my birthday. He didn't say celebrate my birthday. He, he didn't say celebrate my bar, bar, my bar mitzvah. He didn't say celebrate, uh, he, he didn't say celebrate my baptism. He, he said celebrate this day. And I'm, you know, you give me your feedback too if you if you have a difference in opinion. But I'm pretty sure that day was one day before the Passover, and that's called the Last Supper, but it's also called communion. And what do you think, Brother Watchful? Oh, he's maybe he's not. Uh, he's frozen. I think he's got a bad connection again. He, his oh, internet okay. sometimes uh, struggles. Um, well, let me let me read the scripture. If it's okay. <clears throat> is it okay? Oh, of course, brother. Yeah. Okay. This is John chapter, and then we get brother watchful when he comes back. He'll get his opinion on this. John chapter thirteen, and uh, New King James Version says, uh, now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew his hour had come and that he should depart from the world to the Father, having loved his own, and he loved them to the end, and the supper being, and the supper being ended, uh, the devil having already put it in the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, he, and yet he had come from God. He laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe, the, wipe them with the towel that he had girded himself. And then he, when he came to Simon Peter, Peter said, Lord, you're not washing my feet also. And Jesus said, <laughs> what, I, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand it after this. And yeah. anyway, so he, he went on to say, it's all a very good chapter, but he went on to say, you know, I being your Lord and Master, uh, down to 13, you call me Lord and your teacher, your Master, and you, and you say truly that I am. Uh, if then I am your Lord and Master and I have washed your feet, how much, ought, uh, how much also ought you to wash the feet of one another? Uh, so this is huge. Uh, Amen. He's basically telling us that we should have the humility of a servant and be willing to serve and help our brothers and sisters in every situation. And, uh, and, and this is what, and he also said, the greatest among you is the least in the kingdom of all. And the least, and the, the least and the greatest of all. The least, yeah, the, yeah the, the greatest among you in the kingdom of God is the least and servant of all. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a huge statement. And he set the example, too. He, going all the way to the cross. That same day, he went, he went ahead to his own great tribulation day, uh, he went to the cross and died for us. And uh, uh, Brother Watchful, this is John chapter 13 I'm reading. And it says, it starts out by saying, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come mm -hmm. and that he should depart from the world. And uh, and he loved them to the end. And the, when the supper was over, 
Uh, okay, when supper's over was when he's wiped, washed everyone's feet, washed everyone's feet, and told them to keep doing the same thing. So my question to you, because it says now before the feast of the Passover, starts out reading that way. Do you think that this particular day uh, that he told us to commemorate that particular day? Do you think that is the day before the Passover, or that you think that is the day of the Passover? What's your opinion, Brother Watchful? Hmm. Um, so let's see, where are we? We're in John 12, which lands on Nisan 10. I actually have this marked out. I can tell you what day okay. it was. So John okay. 13, you said? Yeah. Yeah, John 13. Yeah. So this is good. This fits right in with your, uh, with your, yeah. your what you guys are teaching lately. Yeah. The Lord's Supper. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this, isn't this the night of... Uh, the betrayal. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, when Jesus Jesus knew his hour had come, yep. and the, the uh, devil, having already put into the heart of Judas, Simon's son, to betray him. Yeah. So this would be April twenty first, um, because we're overlaying the month of Nisan yep. with where we are yep. right now. So we're right now yep. on. We just started Nisan eleven. Yeah, that's so correct. We're currently yeah. technically so, on Nissan 10, which is the triumphal entry. Okay. Uh, okay, but, but you're feeling pretty strongly that John 13 is basically one day before Passover. Is that what you're saying? Or or the uh, night was, or the, the night of his betrayal. So, yeah, probably yeah. the day before Passover. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's correct. But uh, you're, you're welcome. You know, I don't want to be hard-nosed or dogmatic about anything. You guys are welcome to correct me. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really believe it was. And so there are Christian groups who commemorate this because if you read that whole chapter, he said, keep doing this. And, and this is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, to yeah. some extent, not, not as fully yeah. covered as in John. But he said, keep doing this. So some Christian groups believe they should do that once a year, and it's called communion or the Lord's Last Supper. Others believe they yeah. should do it every day, every day, which that's fine too. But uh, if so he did, the, my... My, what I want to stress to the audience is he did set up a new observance or a new holy day, if you want to say it that way, uh, however you want to put it. And as a new holy day, uh, the amazing thing, and I'd like you to check it, Brother Watchful, you don't have to do it right now, but whenever you feel like it and get back with me, is to tell me if from this holy day to October 3rd, 2027, tell me if I'm wrong, if it's not 1,260 days, uh, if... Uh, which everybody who's listening probably knows the significance of the 1,260 days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So check it, and uh, and that and that. Uh, so you know, that that would be that would be so Passover, which would be April 22nd, which we're in currently April 18th. So in four days, uh, April 22nd to October 3rd would be 1,260 days. Yeah, the 21st, I believe, the day before Passover, which is the day he told us to commemorate. So it's kind of like a new holy day. You know, it depends on how you want to look at it. And again, I'm not being dogmatic about it, but I am saying that Jesus looks like he gave us a new holy day, and it's the day before Passover. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, but it, you don't have to believe Nobody else to believe it. I'm not being dogmatic about it, but I would like you to double check it. And see what you think, and give me your feedback. You don't have to do it tonight, but uh, you pray about it for a few days, or however you like to work. You know, do things and uh, a week or whatever. At some point, give me a give me your feedback, brother Watcher. And I don't, I don't. You can call me anytime. Everybody can call me anytime. Uh, I'm happy okay. to, you know, fellowship with the body of Christ. And uh, but I would like your feedback on that. And uh, and anyway, I feel pretty strongly that it is the 1,260 days. But I, I understand your, you know, your position also about. Uh, uh, going from two different Jewish holidays, and you come out in around the middle of October, around the 13th. I think both of those days, both the 3rd and the 13th, are going to be very significant in 2027. And they're tied together somehow, and, they, and they're and they tied into with the resurrection and the rapture. So maybe the resurrection happens 10 days earlier before the rapture. Or who knows? You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's just, just kicking around ideas and uh, thoughts there. So. Sure. Uh, any of you guys are welcome to correct me. Even the even the comments on the chat, you guys are welcome to give me your thoughts on it. I'm just putting it out there as. Uh, but to me, it seems like when when you told me a few weeks ago, I don't know if you remember or not, but I asked you why you're leaning toward the 13th, 
and you felt like it should be a holy day on both the start and the finish of the 1260. And when you said that, that rang through in my spirit. And then, but but thus saith the Lord, this is absolutely thus saith the Lord. The Lord told me it's it's in the beginning of October, uh, Rosh Hashanah, when he's, when he's returning. And, uh, you know, to raise the dead and, and, and give us life and all that, you know, which again, it could take 10 days. It could be an old 10 day thing here. But uh, or twelve day thing even. But uh, wouldn't surprise you know. But anyway, he did tell me it's returning early October. So uh, without a doubt. So that's why I was asking the Lord. I said, why do I have a confirmation that it's from a holy day to a holy day? Because uh, you know I didn't realize the day before. Well, I knew it, but I didn't really. It didn't click the day before the Passover. which so I kept checking. I kept checking. I kept checking. And finally, it, it clicked. But uh, anyway, you let me know what you come up with. I'd like confirmation from another brother other than me. So. Uh, uh, you know, sure. yeah, so it's, it's great. Oh, it's, it's hard to hear, so I'm going to move in. Thank you for telling me, Sister Julie. Um, I just saw that. Sorry about that. I'm going to move in. Yeah, so uh, we have one member that uh, commented that um, Jesus is coming in the clouds in 2030. Y you know, at the, at the rate of things that is moving, it... You know, I'm not sure that I agree with that timeline, even though, you know, we're not supposed to know the day or the hour, but, you know, we will know the general idea of the season. And, um, you know, it, it, it really, you know, everything that we're looking at, really, everything lines up with starting on the Revelations 12 sign in 2017, putting a... Um, you know, uh, the final conclusion to everything around 2027, give or take a little bit, man, just based off of what we've looked at in detail. But, you know, we're, we're open to feedback. Yeah. Dr. Thrapp, I have a question for you. Um, this, this, can you hear me? Oh, sure. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, just delay. Okay. Sorry about that. We're half the planet away, so you get some, get some issues. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So when when you say that the Lord told you something, um, or when you say "Thus saith the Lord," uh, can you explain that a little bit to us? Because the reason I ask is I used to say that until my wife asked me what I meant. So as as somebody who has followed Yeshua, believed in the Creator my entire life, uh, I attribute everything to God. And even when I'm reading and studying and I have, you know, uh, an aha moment, I would often say God told me or showed me something, uh, which is different than receiving revelation sometimes. Uh, sometimes I mean, yeah. it's a still small voice. Uh, and, and but, you know, people talk to angels. People have dreams and visions. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean when you say that the Lord showed you or, or told you? Yeah, good, great question. Yeah, I have dreams, I have visions, I have out-of-body experiences, which that's a type of vision. There's three types of visions. I've had them all, and uh, there's, there's there's at least two types of dreams. One is from the Lord, one is not. But the ones that are from the Lord, even those are in two categories. There's uh, there's the ones where you're pretty sure it's from the Lord, and there's those that are you're absolutely positive it's from the Lord. So. So uh, and then the others, and you're like, well, maybe it's from the Lord, maybe it's not, you know, uh, you know, or maybe it's some of them from the devil, you know. But anyway, the three types of dream uh, visions. Uh, the, when I say thus say it, the Lord, it's usually a vision, and He took me out of my body when I was, uh, uh, let's see, I'd have been about uh, forty, about forty, because the year two thousand. That was the first time I've had eight eight out of body experiences where He comes and takes me out of my body. And usually we go up in a cloud, but other times he's taking me around the earth to show me things uh, and so on. And he'll be talking to me the whole time. I was gone uh, uh, between three and a half and five and a half hours on the longest one. And uh, that was in the year 2020. He told me a lot of stuff. And uh, it was so much so that uh, when I got back, I was trying to write it all down. And I only had like two pages or three. I don't remember. But it wasn't much compared to five and a half hours of him telling me stuff and uh and i was like lord you know, help me remember this and he gave me like one or two more pages and then he and i kept saying lord help me remember you know i'm, I'm forgetting here i'm losing stuff and, and he's like uh don't worry about it i'll bring it back to your memory when when it's time when it's time and uh so i did do a lot of prophecies i prophesied 9 11 
I prophesied the rise in Bitcoin. I prophesied a lot of things. Like people made billions of dollars off of Bitcoin, just so everybody knows, because they listen. Uh, so I prophesied a lot of things, because the Lord told me to prophesy a lot of things. And uh, and like I say, I can't even keep track of, of all of them, because I can't remember them all. But anyway, uh, he was good at letting me know when when the right time was to tell everybody and, and when they were about to happen. Um, and uh, he, you know, another thing he told me in 2020 was that the seven years of plenty would begin in 2017, 2014, and the se and it would there would be a sign. He didn't say what it was, but later we realized it's uh, it's the seven cows born with the number seven on them. And then he said all in 2021 would be the seven years of famine, and there he said to be another sign. And there was seven sickly cows born, all died when they were babies, with only most of them didn't make it to a month. Um, some of them died the first day, and uh, so uh, there was a sign with both of those, and he told me there would be. And so anyway, he gave me a lot of stuff, and I couldn't keep track of it all but because there's so much. But he is good about help jogging my memory. That'd be something I'm trying to remember, and all of a sudden it all comes back to me in every single little detail, and uh, and just amazing stuff, you know, like that. So I say of the Lord, if I say that I say of the Lord, it means that he told me in a vision. Uh, one of those three types. The lowest type of vision is when you close your eyes and you see just pictures. I mean, talking. Somebody it might be an angel standing there talking to you, and uh, it might even be a background to it. it. Might not be much of a background. It might just be uh, gray in the background, or blue in the background, or red in the background, or uh, but it might be uh, a scene. You know, you, you close your eyes and, and, and he's talking to you, and you can write all that down too. If you can write, if you can write with your eyes closed, <laughs> and you have a pencil and a paper, but if you if you start open your eyes and start looking around, you probably lose the vision. Uh, you probably uh, whatever it is the Lord wants to tell you, uh, you'll probably lose it. And uh, I seek Him every morning from about midnight to about two or three or four a.m. as the Lord leads. And sometimes I pray in tongues, and sometimes it's regarding something happening. That, you know, could be far away on a different planet. I'm uh, not a different planet, but a different place on this planet. Although I do know a lady who. He goes off planet, <laughs> and that's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. But uh, yeah, so you know, this is yeah. The Lord will talk to you if we seek Him with all of our heart. This is the reason people don't have more. Okay, let me go through the three types of vision first. So the first one is when you close your eyes and you see it. Now that's it's also revelations. There's revelations where you just suddenly know, and you know it without a doubt. It's the truth, and God's given it to you, and so on. That's revelations, and there's. You know, there's three kinds of revelation: word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and word of understanding. Those are the three, and uh, one has to do with just information, knowledge, and the other one has to do with um, understanding the whole situation, how people are, and what their emotions are, and why they are this way, and what happened when they were a kid, and all that. Uh, and uh, and then the word of wisdom is how to best deal with usually people. You know, people are, you know, things are not working right, and the Lord will just give you. A, a lot of information, a download, I call it download, but it's, it's, in the Bible it's called word of knowledge or word of wisdom or word of understanding, those three types of downloads, and uh, you know, and when a word of wisdom, you know how to deal with the, uh, the, the situation, like, you know, the best way to deal with it, not just for the people involved, but for everybody, you know, the whole world, and Jesus got this a lot, and one example in the Bible, not only Jesus, like when they, when they tried to get him on taxes, and they gave him the coin and said, do we, well, first they said, do, you, do we pay taxes? Or is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? And he said, give me a coin. He said, whose picture? So that he was led, I, I fully believe this, he was led to answer it that way. Because the way he answered, he gives Caesar's thing to Caesar and God's thing to God. He said, whose who's, who's face is on this coin? They said, Caesar. He said, give these Caesar's thing to Caesar and God's thing to God. So he couldn't, sure. couldn't get in trouble the way he answered that. And also when Solomon... Uh, in multiple times, but one, the famous one, is when the, the two women came and they were both claiming the baby was theirs. And uh, he he's, he knew if he ordered the baby to be cut in half, the real one would speak up and say, no, give it to the other, you know, and <laughs> at least the baby will live. And, and that's exactly what happened. And so God gave him a word of uh, wisdom uh, to deal with that situation. And, uh, and so that's the three kinds of revelations and then there's three kinds of visions four if you count the dream and again if you want to get technical about dreams there's three kinds of dreams so you can say there's three kinds of dreams and three kinds of visions and so the the lowest level of vision is when you just close your eyes now this you're fully awake you're not asleep you're closing your eyes you see a picture 
and many Christians have had this. You probably had this, right, Brother Watch? You close your eyes and you oh, see yeah. an image. Yeah, and it's moving. A lot of times somebody's talking to you sometimes. Sometimes it's an angel, sometimes Jesus. Sometimes it's just something God wants you to see and understand. And, uh, and yeah, if there's a lot of information, you can write it down. You know. But uh, anyway, sometimes they're real short. A lot of times they're just real short. Uh, the real short ones I call mini vision, but uh, you know they're real short. But sometimes they only like a second or two seconds. But sometimes the real short ones, if you pray in tongues or pray in the Holy Spirit, seek the Lord, love the Lord with all your heart, uh, usually He'll give you more. You know, just start doing that, and uh, usually with the short ones, usually He'll give you more. Uh, I've noticed this, um, and it might even be a different subject. We might can switch to a different subject, but usually. When the I, I think the angels bring these these lower type of vision maybe they bring them all but uh, uh, this lower vision it's the first level vision which is to close the eyes and see the see the image uh, I really believe that uh, there's an atmosphere or maybe it's the presence of the angel that he wants to give you more but you got to press in to get and it's kind of like him grabbing that angel and saying bless me bless me you know? hey uh, Doctor Thrapp can you Hey, bring your microphone a little closer. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let me let me just cut off the fan. It'll be I might start dripping sweat, but at least you guys can hear me. Uh, you hear me better now? Uh, a yep. little. I hate for you to have to cut the fan because trust me, I know how that goes. I have to I have to mute my microphone and turn on the fan before I fall out. Let me put on low here, and uh, and if you if you can you hear me better now? Is it pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so let me go over the three types of vision. So, again, if you get a little short one, almost always you can press in and get more. And it might even go to a different subject, but it's still an important subject. That's under, All right, I, I turned my volume down. I turned my volume down. Let me know if that's better, guys. I hear you guys just fine. You hearing me okay, Watchful? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I turn, okay. My microphone's okay. very sensitive, so I turned it down. Okay, okay. Hopefully the people in the chat, you guys can let me know if you hear me better now or not. Uh, yeah, chat. I do. Um, so before yeah, okay. before okay. you continue before you continue talking about vision, can I ask you um, what is the difference between word of wisdom and word of understanding? Word of wisdom is is simply knowledge. Uh, you know, let's say you want to you know, you have a complex uh, math problem, you want to know the answer. <laughs> you can just well, get that. Well, then, then, the then my next question is, what's the difference between word of knowledge and word of wisdom? I, th I think what you mean to say is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. Because I'm not aware of um, one of the manifestations being word of... I don't believe that there's word of wisdom and word of understanding. I believe word of wisdom is probably what you're describing as word of understanding. Because are you referring specifically to the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit? Uh, it's been a long time since I uh, studied it, but I, I do believe the Bible does list three, but I could be wrong. So, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, if you believe there's only yeah. two, that's okay. I, I, I believe uh, it's, well, it's, I believe it's word of wisdom or it's word of knowledge, word of wisdom and discerning of spirits okay, is what's listed right. in Corinthians. Could be right. You could be right. And if that's true, then I would say word of understanding fits discerning of spirits the best because... A lot of times when I've been in situations, you're not sure how to deal with people and you're really seeking the Lord, he'll give you information about those people and he'll tell you, you know, and the word of wisdom is how to deal with it all, but uh, but to understand where they're coming from. In other words, a lot of times people are poor communicators, especially when there's strife or difficulty or people are mad at each other or whatever. Uh, and so the Lord will help me understand their spirit or their heart or their background or their childhood or whatever as to why they're like that and and then i then he might give me a word of wisdom on better how to better deal with it uh better you know manage the situation as a pastor these are very valuable i do pastor uh, online of course and then here as well so but primarily i'm a i'm a, a apostle which is a missionary and of course prophet and, you know teach teaching well, all the time but, watchful uh, i think it's also important that we remain open-minded and we we learn from each other as well Sure. No, but the discerning of spirits is good. And that's a good question because I do believe that does fit pretty closely to a word of understand, what I'm calling word of understanding, because then you understand all the people and where they're coming from. Because people are spirits too, by the way. We're all spirits living in a body. You know? So, so, so discerning sure. of spirits is, yeah, is basically understanding people better or spirits, you know, which there's a lot of spirits running around too. And I think 
uh, Apostle John said that. It said that many spirits have gone out into this world. So don't don't trust every spirit. Is basically what he's saying there. You know, to ch test the spirits to see if they're of God, and they, do they confess Jesus as Lord and Jesus came in the flesh and so on. And they, these are these are you know these are good. These are this is the Bible. This is the Word. Yeah. So it's, these are good questions, Brother Watcher. I'm not I'm not uh, put off by it at all. I appreciate it. Uh, let me, if it's okay, I'll go on to the three kinds of visions, uh, the second and third. Sure. Um, it, one thing I wanted to comment is that, you know, the more and more I've dug into understanding all of this, especially the, um, you know, the, uh, it, it, what you guys are referencing is that everything that we're talking about is of a supernatural nature that... Yep. Um, trying to understand this from a, a worldly perspective makes it very difficult, uh, is what I found. Um, trying to uh, look at it from a, a mindset of that state, it, it just seems that there's so much more supernatural behind it than what most people realize. Yeah, amen, amen. Yeah, God is a supernatural God, and he hasn't forgot how to do, you know, supernatural things, including miracles and healing and uh, uh, and helping you understand how to deal with people in a, in a best way, you know, and so on. Uh, because as if we trust in the flesh, we're probably going to go wrong, you know. If, you know, the flesh wants to yeah. punch him in the nose <laughs> and and teach him the gospel while you're sitting on their chest, you know, stuff like this, you know. <laughs> so we got to uh, surrender to God and walk in love, and God knows the best way to handle people, and we don't always know that, and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, so getting back to the vision, so the, the, the one that everybody calls near-death experience, NDE, or out-of-body experience, uh, those are actually the second type of vision, which is uh, when the Lord, you know, Lord or an angel, or you die and you come out of your body, uh, they do seem 100% real, like you're out of your body. I'd say they seem more real than real uh, every time I've had one. Uh, I'm pretty sure my body's dead when I'm gone out of the body, and uh, but when I come back, it comes back alive, you know. And so, that's really what it feels like. And people describe these all the time. And there's channels that that's all they talk about is near-death experiences, which I've had a few of these. And uh, Paul said I was in death, plural. Also, Apostle Paul said I was in death often, and uh, with plural. And people think, well, they, some translations even say, oh, that's impossible. And near death, you know, they, they'll add the word near. Nearly dead, you know, nearly dead, dead off, you know, that, that's not what the text says, you know, uh, which uh, is an interesting scripture. I think it's 1 Corinthians, uh, let me think if I have it on, on my, uh, I think I have it here somewhere, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so Paul does say that, but anyway, so let's get back to the vision, so that type of vision, you know, the Lord will take you places and do it and tell you things, but it might be angels, you might not see the Lord, but yeah, a lot of times people that do see angels, they also see the Lord, so it, it all goes together. Uh, there are some out-of-body experiences where they don't see the Lord and they don't see angels, and um, still, I, you know, in the strict classification, the three types of classifications, uh, the, it is it's still an out-of-body experience or near-death experiences is what it, the closest thing, which which the Bible, I believe, you know, again, I've studied the Bible a lot. You see it where where uh, I, the Gehazi. Uh, the servant of Elisha wanted to get that gold and or silver or whatever, and the so changes the garments and all this. And he went after the guy in the chariot. And when he came back, Elisha said, "Didn't my spirit watch you do this? You know, he said, I saw you ran after the man. I saw. First he said, Where, Where'd you go? He said, I went nowhere. And he said, My spirit saw you. My spirit. So he probably went out of his spirit and watched all this. Uh, is what I'm I'm thinking. Uh, definitely some. Some way to watch it, you know. He, he sounds like you listen to that description. He says, "I saw you run. I saw you over this hill. I saw what you said to the man, and you said this and that." And and the guy couldn't deny it, that he he had uh, you know done those things. And of course, he got in trouble for it too. But uh, anyway, the back to the third kind of vision. Third kind of vision is when it looks a hundred percent like Jesus is really there. Usually, Jesus, but not always. There's a, it could be angels, but it looks a hundred percent like Jesus or the angels are really there, and they might pull up a chair and sit down, uh, you know, uh, and talk to you for, you know, an hour or something or half an hour or 20 minutes or whatever. And you see the chair move, you hear it move, uh, you know, it's, it, it might see him open the door, you know, whatever, you know, this is, this is the third type of vision and it's very real. 
and God is still doing these kind too. That's called an open vision is the third type. But people get these mixed up all the time, and I wasn't really sure on it all of it either. Uh, but now I am pretty sure. The Lord explained Where did Watchful it to me go? I, I think know. we lost Watchful. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, hopefully he's, he'll come back uh, in a few minutes. But uh, uh, I think he was having an issue says, with his connection. Yeah, one comment says, Watchful was raptured again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good comment, yeah. brother. V. Um, J. Uh, yeah, uh, Watchful was raptured again. So. <laughs> Am I coming through better that now that I'm leaning forward? Oh, you, you, uh, you're great. Um, okay, it, okay. It, you know, one thing that uh, I struggled with when I uh, first um, started diving deep into the scriptures, I tried to make sense of everything from a logical standpoint. Um, and it, it made it very difficult for me to understand everything because I, I tried to connect the dots based off um, you know, my personal experiences here and, and what I could prove via touching or seeing with my eyes. Um, and it, it wasn't until I kind of let go of that. Did I really come to understand that, you know, this is, uh, a, you know, what our faith is based in is, uh, very supernatural Amen. And as the, life we live here on earth is m more of a dream state. It, it's not the true reality of things as most folks that have had NDEs or out of body of experiences will have said that when they had these experiences, they felt more alive than when they were actually in their body. Amen. Um, it, it was more clear, more vivid, uh, and all their senses were heightened. Amen. And, uh, you know, it, I've spoke with a lot of folks, including my parents, that, that you know, they just uh, don't agree and can't wrap their head around it. And, you know, they call it sci-fi. Um, right. So I, I think some folks truly under, uh, struggle to understand the, the true gospel and nature of God if you can't, make that step of faith and understand um, the reality of the spirit it because it's it's uh, it's what dominates everything that's what happens all around us every day you know the the veil is very thin from our reality to the spirit and you know even though I've never seen it or heard it I know that it's there it's been proven yeah. to me uh, time after time after time. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, maybe Sister, you have a better a better way of I explaining uh, what I'm trying to say. No, I think you're doing great. I'll, I'll add to that in a sec. Uh, uh, Sister or Brother Day, Key Day, it says uh, she or he has many similar experiences to what I have had with the Lord. And so if you, if Brother Key or Sister Key, if, if, if you'd like to be on our program, uh, you're welcome. In other words, uh, we'd love to have interviews with people that have had different types of visions and uh, experiences. And, you know, we'd, we'd like to do that. And, of course, here, too, even Brother, Watch, Brother Christopher and Brother Watchful might want to get on. Uh, so try to get it. I'll, I'll give out my phone number if it's okay. Is it okay for people to reach me on a phone? I'm old-fashioned. I don't do it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll give it uh, we out. All have the, we all have the same mission, so. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just, all together. We're all the same family yeah. of God, so we're all just helping people. Uh, my number is 269-993-4009. If anyone would like to be a guest on our program that has some experiences with God, some close encounters of the God kind, uh, yeah, feel free to give me a call. Or, you know, if you have something you'd like to teach, uh, we'd love to have new guests on our program, too. And, uh, and of course, uh, Brother Christopher has already been on our program, so that's a real blessing to have somebody sharing and teaching that's uh, been walking with the Lord for a number of years. And, uh, yeah, it's it's all good. It's all good. The out-of-body experiences and the uh, the, um, the open visions, those are incredible. They See, a lot of people have an open vision, and they will swear up and down that it was actual, Jesus was actually there. And in a sense, he was, but probably not in the flesh. But they think he was. If you, if you were to shake hands with him, uh, you'd feel a hand. You know, it, in other words, it's 
And of course, even when you're taken out of your body, if you shake hands with him or you touch his feet, you'll feel the feet, uh, your spirit body. Your spirit body, usually you can tell that it's slightly different. It's different than your physical body. It, it's usually a little bit transparent, at least when you're here on Earth. Now, when you get up in a cloud, sometimes it changes to be uh, more solid looking. But uh, yeah, so you're saying, what you were saying, I'll add to that if it's okay to you, that uh, basically people try to understand everything logically and you can't totally do that. There's some, there's logic involved, but it's really the love of God and the faith in God. There's three forces that God uses, three powers, you could say it that way, which all boil down to faith, hope, and love. And these three, and the greatest of these is love. And they, that Paul said that in, in I think it's 2 Corinthians 13 or somewhere right in there. Uh, maybe it's 1 Corinthians 13. But anyway, the those are powers of God. All three of those are powers of God. And when you understand them and develop them in your own life, then you'll have more miracles and more, and more out-of-body experiences, more visions. Uh, and, and you don't, you know, the, a lot of the understanding it comes through the heart. In other words, you... You understand it because you uh, you have a passion for it and god is the giver of that passion but then you have to press in by studying his word and meditating on it and and seeking him and you know spending time in prayer in the holy spirit in prayer you know praying in the holy ghost and and stuff yeah. like that so the, that and so it's it's kind of like it's kind of like if if i'm really good at brick lane and somebody that's not good at brick lane comes and works with me they usually get that same anointing if they really apply themselves, and they'll get pretty good at it. And, and you see that with Elijah and Elisha. Uh, and you see that with other ministries also. If people work closely and they work for years, then usually they get the same kind of anointing. And so with the Lord, God Almighty, a lot of his anointing, he, uh, Jesus, the angels, Jehovah, they all have a huge, powerful gifting, and those gifts will rub off on you. Is what I, the more you spend time with them, basically that's probably. And the, the greatest of these is love. In other words, the, the three powers: faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. Uh, the three. Hey, how's three? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Just wanted to say sorry for disappearing. My main internet just completely bit the dust, so we're now on backup internet. <laughs> oh, we thought you got raptured again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was talking about visions and out-of-body experiences. I had an out-of-internet experience. <laughs> so when you say, when you say, uh, thus yeah. saith so the I, Lord, uh, yeah. so, so in regards to October, uh, what we what originally, the, the original question was when you say, thus saith the Lord, uh, most specifically in October. So you're saying that this is a vision that you received years ago, or is this something uh, yeah. that he's told you yeah. recently? years ago and then he brought it back the details back clearly uh recently very clearly recently uh, i was not 100 percent on remembering everything you see i was also in a motorcycle accident when i was uh about 15 10 about 10 years ago 12 years ago something like that and literally i couldn't remember my own name for a little while uh, it's uh you know so i also lost a lot of memories and then they're coming back and you know and you know sure. god heals you know but sometimes it doesn't happen instantly you know it, it sometimes yeah. it takes a few mm -hmm. years to get everything back that you had before you know and uh yeah so yeah so in the year 2000 was the longest visit i had with the lord and he told me a lot of stuff and i thank god that i did have sense enough to write as much down as i could and so, then so I what's left what's too. left on that list that so did everything on that list come to pass or is there still things that haven't happened there's still a lot of things that haven't happened and uh of course the ones i wrote down quickest were the things that were about to happen and the year 2000 so it was like 9 11 it was like bitcoin it was like the real estate debacle 2008 it was like all these different things that he told me and, uh, and a lot of little things and some personal things about my own life i wrote those down mm -hmm. and so then as the further mm -hmm. out it goes the less it seems important at the time plus at the time i was still pre-trib rapture i was thinking why is he even telling me this stuff I, i'm not gonna be here you know <laughs> so why, why do i even need right. to remember it? and he never he never corrected me he's like well, you know, he's like, no, this is important, and this is important, this is, and write this down when you get back, and stuff like this, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, and I know he's here, he knows what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, why is that important, you know, because I'm not even going to be here, you know, body crisis, and I'm thinking, well, maybe some of the body of Christ doesn't get raptured, so right. they need to know this stuff, and, and, you know, so I'm trying to remember it, and, you know, all that, but, uh, so our memories are never, at least mine, some people have very good memory, so, mine is never, so perfect. one of the, so you're saying that one of the things that he told you was that the um, the rapture would be in October? Yeah, 2027. 
early October 2027. That's what he said, which early okay. means at least from the 14th backwards. And I thought it was interesting, in other words, hey, from the first um, to the 14th. Yeah. If something's going on. You might want to tune in to New York Prepper. Apparently, something's happening. He's covering it live. Okay. Okay. I think uh, 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 Israel just hit the Iran nuclear plant. I knew it. Wow. I tell you what, earlier they were making announcements that Israel called off its strikes. I'm like, oh, that is textbook shenanigans there. Uh, they, they've they been announcing all week that they're changing their plans and no longer going to strike. I'm like, oh, they're striking for sure. Oh, that's yeah. Um, yeah. We don't have to stay on it. Just yeah. maybe for a second to see what's happening because yeah. this this is well, a paramount guys moment, guys. This is a paramount moment. Yeah. This is literally history in the making. Uh, these yeah. things I've got it on my screen happen. if you want to okay. switch it. Okay. Uh, I'll... I'll add us all to that screen. Stand by. It doesn't sound like there's any audio. Uh, so we have multiple oh, explosions Wrong being screen. reported throughout Iran. Wrong screen. Um, Hold on. I think it's you. I yeah, it might be. The wrong there we screen. go. Yep. There you go. Yep. Um, they, they, he was just talking briefly a minute ago. He said there's multiple targets. I don't know what this is. So is this the Iranian nuclear power plant? Yeah, I think so. Just updating the ticker here for anybody that's just tuning in. Um, just updating the ticker here. So now we know why all that craziness was happening last night. Now we know why. Okay, hmm. now we know why. Um, so, yeah, why? you can see on the flight tracker here <laughs> that, uh, that the airspace has been cleared out. Um, oh, here? Oil prices are surging 3%. That's not surging. Yeah. Oil prices have surged 3%. Israeli missiles have hit a site in Iran, a senior official tells ABC News, a senior U.S. officials, explosions have been reported near the cities of Natanz and Isfahan, which both contain significant facilities for the Iranian nuclear program. Mm. We actually have some video footage here. We have video footage. Wow. This is absolutely insane, guys. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, well, that sounds like the, the primary news. It doesn't sound like he has anything insane. else. Okay. Um, this right. is just yeah. coming in right now. So we're I'll keep watching it. Multiple... Yeah, amazing. Yeah, we're in the, we're about to enter the Great Tribulation. I think everybody knows. Oh, I think, I think yeah. October 8th was the marker, guys. I'm telling you, it's been one thing after another. People were saying nothing's going to happen. Look. I'm not sure if folks have been paying attention, but since that date came and went, every day there's been something new. It doesn't matter yep. if it's Iran hitting Israel. These are all first-time things. Um, yep. That that new law that just passed, this is yep. the groundwork for the B system, guys. This is not a yep. small measure. Um, yep. And it's only going to keep ramping up. Um yeah. Did, did your audience know that they have, you were telling me before the program, you know, that they have now with this new law, they have the authority to just pull you out of your house and put you in jail. Yeah. They yeah. Because you made some comment. Yeah. Does your audience yeah, in know fact, that? Yeah. In fact, we actually haven't told them, um, you know, what we're planning because we're going to be making changes to the way the show works because of that law. Um, the, the, the format, you know, I was talking about formats earlier, uh, the format's going to change. So we're probably going to stop handling news on YouTube uh, because for any reason they can persecute us now. They can take off channels, uh, they can delete our channel, they can take off videos, um, they could send police to our house now. Uh, you know, yep. freedom is no longer yep. free. Yep. So we're, yep. uh, we're going we're gonna to immediately be uh, probably starting... Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, uh, we'll be uh, shortening our amount of time on YouTube 
and start doing more um, live feeds over on Rumble. Uh, and those will be uh, locked into uh, the website so that uh, only our members can actually see that. So we still want to provide, you know, free access uh, to what we're seeing. Uh, but anything that, you know, we can get in trouble for on YouTube, uh, we're, we're going to be moving that behind, uh, you know, probably our membership wall. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, important, guys, that um, if you haven't got... Uh, signed up on our social platform. I know I'm a broken record with this, but I'm not going to stop until I see everybody's name registered on that other side. Um, it, we're going to disengage from the public social domains. And we've been warning you guys of this. You know, I mention this yeah. almost every night. I just didn't expect it to come this quickly. Um, but the, the ball is rolling quickly. And this was the reason why we built our platform. This was the main reason, yep. except we didn't realize that it would come this fast. Um, but just understand that anything you guys post on social media that does not align with their agenda, and it can be faith-based, it can be anything, they can now use that against you. And what they're going to do is be data collecting and monitoring folks and building cases. So uh, I highly recommend that, um, that you're very careful what you put on the public uh, social domains. And frankly, I would not be even texting through normal SMN texting through your friends when it comes to anything that, that does not align. I would make sure you've downloaded a private messaging app that's encrypted. Um, I would keep your messages and any comments on a behind a private community wall. This is serious. This is uh, there is much more to this than what folks understand. This is literally the groundwork for the B system. And if you think this yeah. is extreme that our rights are being violated, you haven't seen anything yet. This yeah. is just the beginning. It will only yeah. get worse. So please, guys, yeah. take this and yeah, you, take heed. You you won't have to be a member of Rumble. I'm sorry if I didn't what if I wasn't clear about that. Several people are asking if they have to be a member of Rumble. No, you'll uh, will we will broadcast on YouTube for a shorter period of time. We don't know what that is right now. Whether it's whether we uh, cut it down to an hour or an hour and a half or whatever that time frame is. We'll still do a live broadcast on YouTube, but then we'll move over to a subscriber only portion to where only members on our website will be able to see the members only section. Uh, so go sign up and register on the website because you will have to be a member in order to to see the additional, you know, time period of our broadcast. Does, is that clear? Yeah, uh, well, I think it is. <laughs> I'm Jesus, too, thank you so much that. for the super chat. He, uh, yeah, put a, actually, he put a verse here for us. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them yeah. falls down, one can help the other up. But pity another, pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, that was his second super chat for the night. Um, oh, wow. And uh, uh, Jesus, I'm really appreciative. Me and him. Uh, talk back and forth on a personal level almost every day. He's got some nice. uh, wonderful insight. He, he's truly connected and wired and tight with the Lord. And he's, uh, he's truly a blessing as a friend and uh, provides me insight when uh, I feel like I don't understand things. So thank yeah. you for everything you for that support. you do, brother. Uh, we appreciate it. And everybody that donates to our mission, we're very appreciative. Yes, indeed. Excellent. Now, Dr. Excellent. Thra Dr. Thrapp, I was under the uh, impression that you had a, uh, a message for us tonight. Yeah, well, we've, we've covered a little bit of it, and uh, I do have a few other things I'd like to mention if, you guys, if your audience don't already know about it. Um, uh, let me get to my notes so I don't really... Okay, one thing I would like to tell people is I've noticed a lot of the body of Christ has health problems, and I am hmm. uh, excellent, excellent... Um, doctor you know god he is the ultimate healer he's the one that heals but anybody that has health Amen. problems give anybody a free consultation anybody anybody and uh and then you know we'll go from there you know which uh, a lot of people get a lot of free consultations because they're 
they're good people and they're really trying to get better. And uh, most people can be better in three days, no matter what the problem is, uh, cancer or anything. It can be better. And most people can be, I'm hesitant to say the word because I don't want to get you in trouble, but let's say uh, full remission. Anybody can be full remission in short order, uh, let's say two weeks or okay. something like that. Uh, yeah, with and, and I've done tens of thousands, probably probably millions now uh, with using different methods that I've taught. Because when you teach it to somebody, they go off and start doing it for other people. So, uh, you know, that's it's probably millions now in the millions. And these methods and strategies work. So the body of Christ, because we're coming into a challenging three and a half years here, uh, the body of Christ needs to get healthy because it's it's probably more important than storing up food is to be healthy and get over here. You know, if you're dependent on some particular pharmaceutical or drug, uh, which we don't have to be, we don't have to be dependent on vitamins. So we don't have to be dependent on any of that. Uh, if we're, if we're uh, matter of fact, right now, all I take is brain vitamins and I'm pretty sure I don't even need those. Uh, you know, so yeah, if you're dependent on that, the Great Tribulation, which is what we're coming into you may not be able to get that stuff so do right. uh do contact me and we may even do start start doing uh, classes somehow uh in some venue that's not so uh, what do you call it not so uh, critiqued by youtube uh not so screened by youtube you know so well uh, we may start doing so here's the thing out. is that um watchful and i we walk a fine line of it's a part of our revenue, our income. This is, you know, we have, we're building this so that we can do this full time. So we walk a fine line of where we stream and how we bring in donations and income because we both have families and we, right. We, right. we want to avoid having to commit all our time to other sources of employment. Right. Um, but at the same time, we don't like to put pressure on our audience. Um, for funds because it just doesn't right. feel right. So yeah, amen. Uh, YouTube has been a revenue source for us, uh, even though it's a questionable revenue source that feels like it get rug pulled at any minute. But yeah. Um, so we're in, you know, we're between a rock and a hard place. We're very grateful for everybody that donates on a regular basis. We have tons and tons of w just wonderful folks that donate to our mission. Um, but uh, we still walk a fine line of trying to juggle exactly how we fund everything because uh, yeah. I'm sure that folks out there that have families and homes, um, when you have uh, a wife and four kids and a mortgage payment, especially in this day and age, keeping them fed along with the different insurance rates and you know the list is a mile long, it's not cheap. So yeah. we're trying to find oh. our way. And we would and like to do this more. Yeah, we're not there yet. Um, uh, this is not, a, it hasn't allowed us to work on this full time, just to be clear about that. It's, uh, it's getting there. We can, we can see that it's growing uh, by those of you who are supporting us. You are the reason that we're able to do this as much as we, as we can. And we want to continue to ramp that up. Um, we are, you know, we're, if, if anyone has any um, sponsorships, recommendations, we're looking for sponsors. Uh, we won't let anyone, just anyone sponsor us. This, this has to be somebody that we believe in and that we feel like uh, is right to recommend them. Uh, we are very, very picky. Uh, likewise with donors, we've actually organized the, the structure of, our, of the entity so that we can remain in control. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're taking the time to protect this as best as we can uh, with the objective to do this through the entire Great Tribulation, should the Lord allow it. Uh, so yeah. we thank you guys very much for your support. And if you have any questions or if you want to help and you want to talk to us directly, uh, we make our information abundantly available. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. You're... Uh... Yeah, I hope I hope the Lord blesses you that way. And people, you know, I think you have what twenty thousand viewers average, or how many? Eighteen thousand. Um, yeah. Well, it's our our social media platform is has really grown fast. It, a month and a half ago, we had two hundred followers on Facebook, and we're over twenty thousand now on Facebook. Yeah, um, yeah. Ever, it's been a blessing because say, it, it, our, our our YouTube growth went to a stagnant standstill. We hit. Yep, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand, and um, 
it must be the timing with the transition and the laws, but it, it's funny how the Lord works because right when YouTube went stagnant, Facebook picked up and went from 200 to 20,000 in the same time period. It's, it was really actually what, amazing. What, what I'm going to say on your behalf, and if, if anything's wrong with this statement, you correct me. Uh, if all 20,000 viewers average would all donate a dollar a month, you guys would be doing pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, a yeah, and I understand. And and we yeah. we have a lot of uh, members that are on our social platform. Our our membership is as cheap as ten dollars a month, and some people pay a lot more than that. We offer several different tiers of memberships, but there's no difference in the benefits. It's it's simply someone's way to donating to our cause and helping us out. And there are some folks, I won't name any names, that pay $1,000 a month for our memberships. And we're so grateful for everything that they do. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much you donate, it all adds up at the end of the day. So we're really yeah. appreciative for everything everyone does as it allows us to operate, yeah. uh, to keep that social platform going. And it actually helps watch when all uh, I pay our, our bills, too. Uh, yeah. So once oh, yeah. we get to that, yeah, once we get to that, um, to that point where we are drawing in enough revenue to do this full time, we're going to do this even more right now. We only do it at the end of the night because I work all day, um, but we plan on doing it in the morning uh, and after lunch and at night. Um, we yeah. would like to be streaming on a regular basis so that we can keep everybody in the loop. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of logistics. And uh, yeah, once we're at that point, and we have enough users on our social platform, we'll be able to get there. So but yeah. we are yeah. very appreciative for everybody for what they do that we have so much loving support from our community, that it is it's extremely heartwarming, uh, extremely yeah. heartwarming. It's it, yeah. It's the reason I get up and do what I do every day is to be with the community at the end of the night and a fellowship with you guys. It's, but it's it, really, me, uh, it's motivating for me. Yeah. Awesome. I, I love your program, by the way. I watch it all the time. Uh, so, but correct me if I'm wrong. If everybody would donate a dollar a month, everybody can afford a dollar a month. If everybody donate a dollar a dollar a month, you guys would be doing pretty good. Right. Am I correct on that? Everything yeah. would be great. That would yeah, be, that would be fantastic. Yeah, so everybody should pray about that. Uh, you know, it's. I mean, if you can do more, then do more. But uh, yeah, help help out the brother, this, this ministry, brother Watchful and brother Christopher's ministry, the two witnesses live ministry. Uh, yeah, uh, think about it, pray about it. That's that's what I'm going to say because um, you know, I yeah, I, I do believe that people, anybody can afford a dollar, almost anybody can afford a dollar a month. Uh, it's, it's very, very uh, small. I, I you know, I, every time I go to town, I give away you know few dollars you know i don't want to brag on myself but i get way more than what people would believe and mainly the lord blessed us through you know words of knowledge words of wisdom uh like bitcoin and stuff like that but uh we still we feed a lot of people so you know we still we still take donations and receive donations and uh and i thank god for that if it wasn't if it wasn't for that we wouldn't there'd be you know we wouldn't be able to take care of half the children we take care of over here so i, I thank god for the people that are you know but we don't make any big pull for money we just trust the lord and um yeah so i think you guys are the same way you just love people you don't want to put oh, a burden yeah. on them yeah yeah, yeah you know, it, but a dollar a dollar a month is not a burden just so everybody knows <laughs> and, you know and i i even uh, am not comfortable even bringing it up uh, with the little amount that we do it's just it, yeah it is if, what if it we is. if we could do it if we could do it for free 100 percent free we would and the unfortunate yeah. reality of it is is we can't you know uh yeah. you know we want to grow this you know, resources cost money, uh, you know, Absolutely. time cost money, not even just our time, Absolutely. but also those who help us. So, Absolutely. It, so every person should think about it and pray about it. And I think every person can do a dollar a month. And you think about it, you go yeah. out to, you go out to lunch and you, you leave $2 tip or $3 tip, you know, and that's a, you know, you might go out to lunch twice a week, you know, I don't personally, because I eat a yeah. careful and, diet for health. People Something do. else I think is worth saying is Christopher and I are, you know, we come from, you know, six fit, you know, this is not something that I say to brag, um, but I want to, to make sure that people are clear that we, 
you know, in our lives have gotten to a, a place where we, uh, you know, pretty much live at a plurality lifestyle, if you're aware of that, to where uh, we only spend the money on the things we need. Uh, we're, we're not looking to buy boats and planes and, you know, anything to, you know, get some fulfillment out of life. Neither, neither one of us really are motivated by things. Uh, we're motivated by helping and, and, you know, moving, spreading the gospel uh, and, uh, you know, helping people. You know, we want to build you know, Bible ministries to where we give Bibles away. Uh, we want to be able to, you know, help those in need. So it's like, we don't need any, you know, we only need what we need. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm not going to buy a plane. No, I'm not going to. Never, never. It's it, it's really uh, these these people that do. I mean, we love them, uh, but some of them are our brothers, and some of them pretending to be our brothers. But uh, anyway, uh, these people that do, uh, you know, they could easily feed thousands and thousands of children with what they, you know, I'm talking full time, right. to save thousands of lives yep. and elderly too. Worldwide, children and elderly are suffering horribly, and uh, they are a lot of absolutely. Them, wind up dead very young ages and stuff like this and uh you know in premature age, old age too as well and so uh, we over here we build houses for elderly we put in water wells for villages that have no they have to walk someone have to walk five miles that's amazing uh, yeah yeah and and that's important in other words uh that it's not important to have a jet or three jets or or in your right. own airport or, or and i won't name names but we all know what i'm talking about so, so anyway we love those brothers, but uh, again, some of them I'm not sure even brothers. Uh, they could be doing a lot more to help the kingdom of God. And uh, is it is it about building? You, know, you guys are the same as me. We're not about building our own kingdom. You guys love nope. the Lord. You want to build His kingdom. I'm saying. In fact, way. we're you actually know, selling things. We're we're selling off yeah. our excess, which yeah, everybody exactly. should be doing. Now's the time to yeah. sell your excess yeah. things you don't need. That's right. That's right. Money's going to be no good, and things you're not using for five years. You only got three and a half years left. If you're not going to use it the next three and a half years, sell it. And, and, you know, yeah, right. Money or whatever. You know, help help the the work of the Lord while there's yet time, because the time is coming when the money's no good. And, uh, the money, paper money, will be gone, and and you have to take a mark. You have digital money. Uh, it's coming. In other words, they what they may not jump into that right away, but uh, uh, you know, first it'll probably be a card, and uh, and then. Within a month or two months or six months, they'll decide that everybody needs to get a mark, a chip in their hand or in your forehead or an injection. You know, it's not supposed to, probably not supposed to say that. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So anyway, the time is short, so people should get busy and support the kingdom of God. And uh, I do highly recommend you guys' ministry as a valid, Thank valid you. ministry uh, for for people to support. And again, twenty thousand listeners, at one dollar a month is nothing. Uh, you know, in other words, for each person but it would help you guys a lot. So. I appreciate you being vocal, um, but let's move on to something else. I, I don't want to yeah. beat that, beat that uh, horse into the ground. Folks, folks yeah. know what we're about and yeah. uh, That's right. right. And, and already yeah. most of our community donates what they can. So okay. it's, it's not like that folks aren't already. So yeah, yeah. I, That's right. I, I well, mentioned well. it just to, to mention it for any of the new folks, but other than that, I, it, we can talk about scripture or the news or anything else. Or yeah, well, I know uh, you Dr. had several Graham things. Some, yep, he has got some more that I want to hear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you, you guys already are fully familiar, and your audience are fully familiar with the uh, 490 years from Sultan Suleiman and the royal decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Are you guys? You, have you already covered that pretty well with your audience? Yeah, uh, we haven't covered it. I'm aware of it. Oh, okay. Let's cover it with your audience, if you don't mind, because I think it'll bring sure. a lot of people. Sure. Uh, there's a there's a prophecy in Daniel, and everybody knows about this. It's, four, it's called the 490 year prophecy, and it says that from the royal decree to rebuild Jerusalem, and and it lists the moat, and it lists the walls, and it lists the streets, and uh, until Messiah the Prince, uh, which everybody understands is Jesus, almost everybody agrees that's Jesus. Uh, there'll be 490 years, and that happened the first time Jesus came, but what a lot of people don't know, I'd say 90% of Christians, maybe 99, don't know that that's fulfilled twice, at least twice. And the second time is his second coming, which is about to come. And so in 1537, a royal decree was issued. Uh, and anybody can check it. It's up on the, there's plaques on the walls at Jerusalem that show when this decree was issued by uh, the highest ruler in the Ottoman Empire, they ruled most of the world at that time. They ruled all the Middle East. They ruled half of Africa. They ruled half of Europe. 
uh, the highest ruler at that time, Sultan Suleiman, and he had a dream where an angel or Jesus or somebody came to him and uh, told him to, go, to, to issue a decree and have the walls rebuilt and have the moat rebuilt and, and so on. So it's a, it's a re repetition of what happened. Uh, and he issued that decree and he put up a plaque everywhere. There was originally, they figured, about 15 plaques. And we're talking heavy duty bronze plaques, heavy duty bronze packs, probably an inch and a half, two inches, three, two and a half thick. And they put them everywhere that he did repairs. Uh, there was at least 15, according to what uh, the articles I've read. And a lot of them are still mm -hmm. there, maybe 11 or 10 or 9 or 8. They're still there. And a lot of them have dates on them. So you can check it. Anybody can check it. And, of course, they were using a different calendar. But if you study both calendars, you can, you can fit them together yourself. And every, pretty much everybody agrees it was 1537. And so if you had 490 years means Jesus is coming back 2027. So, so it's it's so it's so mind bending and there's there's a lot of information available if you're willing to download some PDFs and find it online. Anybody can study this and I think it's a huge blessing to the body of Christ because we realize we only got three and a half more years. I mean if it if it happens to be exactly four hundred and ninety years, it looks like it's gonna be January. So that's only that's less than three years. That's two years and some months, you know, but uh, anyway, that's that's exciting stuff. That's uh, if you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, see that's hope. There's three powers of God: hope, faith, and love. And of course, the greatest is love, and the second greatest is faith, and the, and the third greatest is hope. They're all power of God. They're all how God works and how He flows through us and He flows through others, and it unites the body of Christ. And so, when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, this is huge. Uh, you know, to me, this is like. Uh, it's like nothing. This is like, uh, you know, it's just the, the most high, let's say it that way. It's like, it's just incredible. It's just incredible to see that we're right there. Or, you know, we just three, three and a half more years like that. I think he's actually going to show up and do something. And again, this is not thus say of the Lord, but thus say of the Lord, he is going to show up in October 2027. That's thus say of the Lord. But I, I feel quite strongly he's going to start doing stuff before that. And uh, when the first rays of the sun come up, I'm going to liken this to the sun because the Bible does. It talks about the sun of righteousness arising, and it's spelled S-U-N, the sun of righteousness mm -hmm. arising with healing in his rays. And it says wings usually, but it's talking about the rays. So when the sun is rising, if I, I get up every morning, I watch the sunrise. I always love it. Uh, you start seeing the first rays come, and if the sky conditions are right, you actually see the rays way up in the sky above you. And so there's healing in his wings. So before he actually returns, I think he's going to be doing some great things. So it might start 2026 even, but it might start 2027. So he's going to be doing things before his actual physical return is what I believe. And uh, and I just want to encourage everyone to, to grab a hold of that and claim that for you. Uh, it does say we're going to be Amen. given great. Amen. We're going to be given great exploits. Uh, in other words, the, the Antichrist can look around and see these people doing great exploits, and it's going to disturb him <laughs> and, and of course that's the saints of god that are doing these exploits and uh and exactly what those are maybe it's calling down fire on the on the dark side and burning up a, a million of their troops or something like that it's gonna it's gonna definitely bother him so we're gonna be uh, a thorn in his side and uh and and thank god for that but anyway it's getting really close so i just the light at the end of the tunnel is huge uh three years is nothing you know it's you think about your whole life i mean three years is nothing Think about the last three years that went by, how quick they went by. Went really, um, went yeah. really quick, yeah. Yeah, so it's exciting stuff. Uh, so, again, health, I, I, when you were off li offline for a little while, I mentioned that, it, you know, it's good to store up food, meat especially, and, and whatever. You know, even, even uh, beef can be cured with just salt. You can store it with just salt. There's videos on YouTube how to do it. So if you don't know how to do it, do it. Store up some food. And But even more important than storing food, uh, number one is our relationship with God. Do we have a strong relationship with God? Are we in a safer place? Are we banding together somewhat in Christian communities or at least at least getting to know your neighbors and finding out if they're Christians and, you know, working together through this thing? Uh, we'll be supporting each other. And then uh, the other thing that's, that's big is is your physical health. If anyone has a long-term health problem and you want to get over it, call me. And that's why I gave out my number earlier. Is it okay to give it out one more time, you guys? Sure. Okay. Two six nine. Can't hear you, Christopher. Nine. Oh yeah, Christopher was saying something. But I, I, I muted myself. I apologize. I was just saying you don't ever have to ask, brother. 
Oh, okay, great. Thank you, thank you, man. I just want to bless people. We don't charge for the first consultation, and a lot of times don't charge for any of them because uh, we just want to help people, you know. Uh, and and most people get po real favorable responses in three days when they do what I tell them. And again, it's God working through the natural and the supernatural. And most people are uh, you're not supposed to say cured on this. So I'll say uh, huge remission. I will say it like that. Huge remission and in 30 days a huge remission uh, no matter how long you had the problem uh, so uh, god heals and he does use natural means sometimes um, not just supernatural means uh, he uses both so people are welcome to contact me for healing and health any kind of health issues that you have um, so most most diseases can be reversed or mitigated uh, and then you're ready for you know making it through the three and a half years you may have to you don't know. You may have to climb some mountains. You may have to, uh, you know, call down fire on the enemy. You may have to run. Uh, Elijah, he he ran, uh, outran the horses and the chariots by the power of God. So uh, yeah. So this is some people. I tell them, you know, you need to think about running, and they'll say, No, I haven't run in 30 years or 40 years. <laughs> I can't do that. And then, you know, if I keep after them, usually they're running after after a while, and they're doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we can do more than we think we can do. If if we. Hey, um, are so what's the number? My number, phone number. Yep. What's the what's the number that they can contact you at? Yeah, two six nine 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 three four zero zero nine. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot I didn't give it out the second time. Sure. Hey, uh, Doctor Thrapp, one of our members asked, "Is there any way to help the paralyzed?" Absolutely. I was paralyzed myself two years. I had a rock slide come down on me. They said I'd never walk again. And so uh, you can walk. You can, you, uh, yeah, absolutely. Any particular, any problem can be healed, and you can get hold of me, and I'm happy to teach you about it. And we're thinking of doing online, more online classes along these lines, or teach groups. But also, I teach individually, so I'm happy to help people. Uh, and uh, like you say, the first consultation is always free. And you know, if I see people are really trying, uh, you know, then I'm happy to give you more. You know, if people, but you know. I really don't do additional consultations is when they call me up a week later, two weeks later, and I ask them, did you do the three things I told you? And and, and I make them write them down, and they'll, and they'll say, no, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> and they always have a long list of excuses. I'll usually give them one more chance. I'll say, well, this is your last chance. After that, it's going to cost money if you want to keep talking to me. <laughs> And then they'll get a little more serious, or they won't, or they, you know, or they do call. Some of them do call a third time, fourth time. Won't do anything. I tell them. Oh. So <laughs> at that point, I tell them you might need to find a Christian psychiatrist or a psychologist. Hey guys, uh, Iran is Iran is hitting back on Israel already. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking at the feeds. I'm not. I'm not seeing any. What are you hearing? I'm not seeing any. Uh, uh, Stephanie. Specifics. Stephanie. Stephanie said that. Stephanie, where where are you watching that, honey? Um, she'll answer in one second. Um, I don't know. I, I, uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, I wonder if Fox News has anything. Uh, uh, did you have I, any I other visions? Look. Yeah. Uh, right. While we look oh, yeah. for this, uh, Dr. Thrapp? Yeah, well, I've had yeah. a lot of visions, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've specifically because, you know, you, you wanted to come on and share some stuff uh, that was relevant yeah. Uh, tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so we did share, uh, we shared about, you know, two or three, four things now. ABC and, uh, News. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the words the words from the Lord is basically about 2027, and uh, I'm glad I got to share about uh, King Suleiman and his, and his uh, you know, his, his, what do you call it, a dream. He had a dream, and then he issued a royal decree. He was the highest ruler at that time, and uh, that's, that's huge, in my opinion. If the audience understands the, the gravity of that, it's it's amazing that um, God did it again. In other words, uh, 490 years in advance, both times, uh, he issued a royal decree to rebuild Jerusalem and the walls and the moat and the gate and the gates and all that. Uh, yeah, it's huge. So, yeah, happy to happy to share the other things. Uh, well, right now there is a confirmation. There's a I, I, brother Chris might. I mean, yeah, brother Christopher might want to play it uh there's a young boy who had a 50 um a 50 day watchful break. watchful i have to play it my computer uh when i play video on the hosting computer it creates an issue on the stream um it yeah 
I, I'll see yeah, if I can a, find it and send it over to him real quick. Yeah, there's, there's actually two of them I want to talk about. The one is, a, so this comes out to really close to 40 days after the eclipse. It's uh, like 42 days or 41 days is the prophecy this little boy about nine years old received that uh, tsunami is going to hit. Uh, and and the, uh, the they think it's Texas. They're not sure where, but it's a, a, ty a type of wave big enough to knock down buildings, so that sounds like a tsunami. But the, the title says flooding, but uh, yeah, if it's big enough to knock down buildings, it's not a normal flooding, you know, it's, uh, yeah. So anyway, so that, I wanted to cover that. I do feel there's a confirmation there, but I don't know where, and I don't know for sure, I can't confirm for sure the, the 42 days from the eclipse, 50 days from when he got the vision. Uh, and, uh, but I do feel it's confirmation there. So it, they're, they, they, him and his family, are moving away from the coast. Uh, they're, they're the mom, and the, you know, they're moving away from the coast, which might be a good idea, you know. So, so sure. it's good to warn, sure. good to warn people. And uh, and then uh, let's see, there was another one, strange attacks. Uh, yeah, there's many strange attacks coming, um, cyber attacks, and this is all probably in the next three or four months. Uh, cyber attacks. Uh, they're gonna. There's, uh, of course, the locusts, everybody knows about those. And then there's uh, also going to be a poisonous spider released, uh, according to one brother. And I believe his vision. I totally believe it. He believes I'm sending the it. link on Signal right now, Watchful. I'm sending the two links on Signal right now. Yeah, so we can watch either of those if you guys want. But I do feel confirmation for both of those, just so everybody knows. And other weird things like, you know, the ships, the one ship the crash everybody heard about it and there's others that crashed if you check back the last few months uh so it, there'll be more of these kind of things crashes with cars ships and airplanes and uh they'll be taken over remotely and crashed uh, so uh this is something else people should know about uh so again we don't have exact timing on anything on any of this but it between now and uh between now and rosh hashanah you know th these things are going to start it's uh it's going to be a lot of weird attacks, let's say it that way. And this is really the third wave, excuse me, the second wave of World War III, the three waves. Uh, if anybody wants me to go into that, I can. I did cover it briefly last time, but I'm happy to cover it again if people want me to. Everybody hearing me okay? I hear you just great. I think yeah. uh, okay. Watchful is loading up whatever he's loading up. Okay. Yep, they're loaded, right. ready to go when you are. All okay, right. very good, very good. Let, let's go ahead and play them then, if you if you don't mind. Whichever one you want to start with. Okay, this is the brother I with the spider. I was recording this video to share um, my experience. Uh, I don't know if I should call it a vision or a dream, because even though it did happen technically when I was asleep, uh, I don't know if maybe I just like woke up in my spirit or something like that, and it was my spirit body in my house or, or, or what, but um, it felt like exactly, you know, pretty much just like I, I was now where I can like see everything where I can like talk normally and everything. Um, and so this happened yesterday at um, around, I want to say maybe like three in the morning. Um, so yesterday was uh, April 12th. Um, so this happened at April 12th, um, three in the morning. Uh, I usually pray a lot during um, what's known as the witching hour. Um, if you don't know what the witching hour is, it refers to the period of time between midnight and 3 a.m. Um, which is when the, the height of demonic activity and satanic services uh, are held. Um, so uh, I just made it a habit to, to, to pray during that hour because I used to have, um, I guess you can say, night terrors and sleep paralysis and stuff like that. And so, I, you know, uh, I started praying and rebuking all the demons and whatnot. And so after a while, they had the habit just stuck. So I, I just, you know, I usually pray a lot during the uh, the witching hour on during this particular prayer session, um, I should probably also mention that I keep uh, my notebook, my Septuagint, my Bible dictionary, all, all of that stuff is in here, like right next to my bed. Because sometimes I'll get up and like do a Bible study in the middle of the night or whatever. Um, and I also have a, a notebook with, with, with a pencil because uh, I still use pencils instead of pens. Um, and so this particular prayer session, um, shortly after uh, I had finished praying, I went to bed. But while I, when I was in bed, I... Um, was still praying so uh, i prayed a little bit extra while i was in bed um and i kept my notebook uh, on my mattress along with my pencil um just in case the lord um had any information he wanted me to know anything he wanted me to share with everyone and, and i told him lord if there's anything you want me to tell your people let me know um i'll try to jot it down so i don't forget and then you know share it that way um i don't i, I have a youtube channel 
Um, I just used to upload m music because I, I was a composition major in college. I studied music, but that's irrelevant. And so this particular prayer session, like I said, um, I had my notebook ready to go. I, I went to bed. Uh, I fell asleep. I fell into a, a deep sleep. I don't even remember exactly when I fell asleep, but then I woke up, um, or I think I woke up, and all the lights were on in my house. And now um, anyone who's read the Bible knows that the angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him, and it defends them. So basically, each of us, if we believe in Christ Jesus, we have a guardian angel. It doesn't matter whether you feel it. It doesn't matter whether you see it. He's there. So he's got your back. Um, and so I saw this guardian angel in the hallway of my house. Um, he was maybe, I don't know, seven, eight feet tall and, um, you know, huge wings, maybe, I don't know, like if, if the angel was eight feet tall, his wings must have been like eight or 10 feet wide. Wow. So, so put it that way. He's, he's a big, strong dude, um, a robe that was like pure white, like you've never seen before. It was like glowing white. It's the kind of white there that any white you see on earth, if you've ever bleached a white t-shirt to try to get it clean, believe me, that is dirty in comparison to the white that I saw coming from this angel. And then um, I guess he knew that um, his appearance was intimidating to me. And so he went into my bathroom and I guess I, I, I say he changed. So um, what I mean by that is that he, he, he hid his wings, he hid his gold glowy face um, and turned more into like a human form and he reduced his height a bit. Um, and then he entered my room. He sat on the floor and he began to tell me about a dangerous spider, which I found really weird because I'm thinking to myself, Lord, what do spiders have anything to do with me? Because I, I didn't go to sleep thinking about spiders. I'm not normally afraid of spiders. I don't even pay attention to spiders, to be honest with you, because I, you know, if I see a spider, I kill it. That's, that's about the extent oh. of my relationship with spiders. <laughs> Um, I love spiders. And so he, you know, he told me quite seriously that there's a very dangerous spider um, that the the bite, when it bites you, the symptoms start out like a flu, but the symptoms will lead to death. And that there's currently no known vaccine or antivenom for this particular spider because it's not a regular spider. It's um, a genetically modified spider. And um, mm. uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. And so I, I jotted all this down and I asked him what the name of the spider was, because, you know, if it's something that's really that dangerous, then it makes sense to to know what it is. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to Google the, the, the information of a genetically modified spider because nobody's going to want you to know about it. Obviously, it's, it's obviously some sort of hidden project. Um, and so I had no idea what he meant when I, I, I asked him the name and he said RT41. I'm like, I don't know what that is. And so um, let me see if I can flip the camera around uh, because RT41 is actually a highway. I don't know if you can see that. So this particular highway starts all the way down to Miami, Florida and goes all the way up to Michigan. It pretty much splits the U.S. into two parts, the east and the west. And so when this happens effectively that same stretch of highway that you saw will basically be sort of like i guess you can call it the band of death because there's just going to be so much death in that area that no one's going to want to no one's going to want to be there i know no sane person that i know personally is going to want to be there um and so like, like i said um the whole highway itself it actually goes ironically through 41 different cities uh, not all the cities are listed here, but you can feel free to Google RT41 and find it for yourself. Um, and now the, the verse that this per pertains to, just so you know, is uh, in Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. Uh, I'll read it real quick. Um, so it's the, the fourth seal, widespread death on the earth. And it says, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him, and power was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. And so um, that's, that is the fourth seal in Revelations, and that is preceding the, um, the other three seals, which all, all of this is going to precede the, the, the trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, obviously. Um, and so, you know, I wrote all this information down, and I, proceed, I proceeded to share it with all my friends and my family. 
Uh, most of them don't believe me. They they, they kind of think I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. But how many times do we yeah, hear that? Um, so I figured <laughs> I'd, I'd share that way. Um, the message can get out there. Um, shortly after I had this in, uh, encounter with the angel, there was actually two spiders that showed up in my house. I kid you not. I can't even make this up. And so one of them was black, right? It looked like this. Hmm. It looked exactly like that. That was on my kitchen floor when I was in the middle of eating breakfast. And then there was another one that appeared right near my sink that looked like that. So he had a black widow and a brown recluse in his house? The ironic thing is that one of those spiders is actually a black widow and the other one is a brown recluse. I didn't know this until I started Googling images of spiders to try to find what I saw. Hmm. Um, And so the black widow and the brown recluse are actually the two deadliest spiders in America. Um, I live in Connecticut, so I've encountered both of these spiders before. I haven't been bitten, but my sister-in-law has been bitten. All right. Just so we're not spreading fear about fighters, that statement is uh, absolutely not true. That is a myth. Uh, You can go look that up on the internet. While they are the most, they are toxic. uh, They tend to uh, only if you're allergic to their venom, can they uh, be deadly? There have been a lot of people who have been bitten by black widows and brown recluses brown recluse spiders who have it's only been like a bee sting um there there is an unusual fear of spiders um that is perpetrated through the internet as as i live on a farm spiders are absolutely a requirement when you're on a farm otherwise you get massive amounts of insects and pests uh so we we don't squish our spiders we make sure we escort them outside uh, and, you know, I've picked up brown recluses. I've picked up, we actually fed a black widow for the longest time just to keep it in its place because we didn't want it to wander. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't have uh, toxic venom, but what he's saying as far as they're deadly, that's actually a myth. It's not. You can go Google that. Uh, there's, there's uh, you know, lots of people who study spiders uh, who are trying to fix that issue, um, is, is that myth. Uh it's it's based on reports from like 40 years ago where, uh, you know, they didn't really have a chain of custody with somebody who died when they got bit, not a chain of custody, but they couldn't actually verify what it was that killed them. So if you, if you actually look at the history on that, it's, it's not really even true. Um, there are more venomous spiders actually than brown recluses. Australia is full of spiders that do far more damage than black widows and brown recluses. Um, as far as the one for RT41, that may very well be the case. Uh, there could be a genetically modified spider that could be dangerous or deadly. You know, he's absolutely right. Seal number four, beasts of the earth are one of the things that kill people. So it's entirely possible that there are beasts of the earth of which could be insects. So just wanted to clarify some of that so we're not spreading yeah. this information. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, I, I agree with you on pretty much all that. It could be that they come up with a new, more deadly version of something. And, yeah. uh, or it could be that, you know, just people are getting... A, a big factor when you get bit, whether it's a snake or a spider or a scorpion or whatever it is, a big factor is if you're worried and afraid, it does much more damage to your system. Uh, if you yeah. if you uh, if you just trust the Lord, you get less damage. So uh, yeah, this is important to learn. That's called faith, by the way. Trust the Lord. Yeah. Have faith in, in the Lord. Yeah. Go right ahead. Sorry, brother. Yeah. yeah. And also infections. Um, spider or snakes aren't entirely different um, uh, beast altogether. Their venom can actually absolutely kill you. Um. I think everybody knows that. I don't think that's in, in, yeah. in question. Yeah. yeah, that was in the snake you, bite, by the way. That was yeah. in the that was in the word you're yeah. not supposed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two kinds. Yeah. Two kinds. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we want to watch this other phone. video? The uh, yeah. the uh, yeah, the eight year old. Sure. Know, if you don't mind. Here we go. Word of the Lord to you all on today. Um, so, me and my um, we have the prophetic gifting. Um, are similar in how we hear from God, um, and I've been able to see His prophetic gifting. And um, as we were led by the Lord to release His word, I'm going to give you all just a little bit of information before I bring my son to speak. Um, 
I'm probably going to, I don't know, it depends on how the Lord leads me to shut off the comments because this is my child and, um, you know, for his protection um, and things like that. So, but I'm going to go ahead and just let you all know. Um, I have visions, I have dreams, I have things. Many, many of you all probably have the same thing, right? And the Lord will show me certain things. And what I noticed is in my household, I, we prophesy in part. We know the Bible says we prophesy in part. So God will give me a part and then he will give my son a part. And my son doesn't know the things that I have visions and dreams about. Um, but he'll come and tell me his because I told him to because you know, I know that's something that the Lord wants is for him to share that and for me to steward his gift as a mother should. Um, amen. So with that being said, um, when I was in the car on, uh, I want to say it was on Sunday. I want to say it was on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. It was either Sunday or Monday, but I was in the car. And when I was in the car, um, which is better for oh, attracting more that. money in abundance? The law of attraction. Yeah, I actually have YouTube Premium. It's just well, not according linked to, science. to this channel. So sorry about that. I remember that I was speaking to the Lord. I remember seeing these buildings fall. There was buildings falling in my vision. Um, I saw them just fall, like stuff falling and tumble down or whatever. And, um, you know, I did not know. I just knew I saw that. Okay. So when I came in the house, my son came and he told me what he heard the Lord say. He heard it and he saw visual what God was saying to him. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him on, introducing my son. Um, I don't really feel the need to bring my kids on unless I feel led by the Lord to do so. And um, what I do want to share with you all, because I feel led to share this, for anybody who is a, in the office of a prophet or you have a prophetic gifting, right? We know that there are two situations that I can think of. One, speaking about Jonah, right? For so long, I thought about, you know, you hear about Jonah and him going to the place, but it wasn't just him going to the place. It was also him releasing the word. He didn't want to release. He didn't clearly want to release a word and he did not want to go. So there were two things that he did not want to do. So even if you go to the place that God tells you to, but you didn't release the word, you're still walking in disobedience, right? When God sends a word to you, he expects you to deliver it because he wants you to pray. He wants you to tell the people about it so that we can pray because there are strength in numbers, right? And also, get your hand off that, please. but also to um, cause people to repent. Right. Because we know that God is gracious. He's merciful. And when we come to him and we come to him with repentance. Right. We know in Second Chronicles 714, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. God is looking for his. He's looking for us to humble ourselves. He's looking for us to repent. He's looking for us to turn from our wicked ways. He gives us that room and grace to to turn to do it the right way, to do it in a way that is according to his word and his commandments and his statutes and his laws, right? So those things are important. And releasing a word is not just about a releasing a word and, and seeing it come to pass and things like that, but it's releasing the word so that God's people will know what is coming so that we can be prepared, but also that we can be in prayer and also to cause people to turn, right? Because you don't want this disaster. We don't want this judgment. We don't want these things to come into America or any other place for that matter. Amen. So that was just a little something that I wanted to give you all um, to speak to you all about. And again, I'm going to go ahead and bring my son in so that he can speak with you all and tell you all what the Lord said to him. Okay. All right. Come on, son. Let people know how. what's your name. My name is Colleen. You're going to look at that camera right there, okay? You see it? You can't see it. You can look this way if you want to. What's your name? My name is Colleen Evans. You got to tell me your last name. It's okay. His name is Colleen. Um, and how old are you? I'm, I'm eight years old. He's eight years old. Wow. This year I'm going to be nine. This year he's going to be nine. <laughs> so he hears from God, right, son? Yep. And you have dreams and visions, right? Yep. Yep. So... Um, God released a word to him, and he's going to tell you all what God told him. And again, we're going to stand in prayer. Me and him already been praying for our family and for America, right, son? Mm -hmm. Okay, so on Monday, I want to say it was Monday. It was, what it, it was, it was Sunday. 
it was Sunday. Okay. See, I said Sunday or Monday, y'all. See, he remembers. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Um, what did God speak to you about on Sunday? What did he show you and what did he say to you? He he, he showed me that, 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 that the flood made these tall buildings fall, collapse. So he said he saw a flood causing these tall buildings to fall. Yep, and God was talking to me. He, and, and, and he was explaining, explain, explaining what was happening. He was explaining what was happening, but he mm-hmm. also gave you some a time frame. What did God tell you? He, he, he said 50 days. He said 50 days from here, right? Mm-hmm. So the word that was released to my son, if you all heard, he heard the Lord say 50 days from here. And he saw the, he saw a flood. And he saw these tall buildings fall down. You also said you saw something else on top of the tall buildings. Yep. Fire. He saw fire on top of the tall buildings. Okay. So what I want to also speak to you all about is. It's 42 more days until the flood may happen. Okay. My son is saying it's 42 more days until the flood may happen. When we pulled it up, it showed May 21st as the day of a flood um, coming. He, God did not speak to my son about the location of this, this flood. Um, he just spoke to him about the days that were, um, the days, how many days until that time period. And he also showed him the buildings falling. Like I told you about that same day, I saw buildings falling. I saw it before he did. And then he came to tell me that he saw it. So um, he also saw the same thing that I saw, but God gave him more. He gave him another part, so to speak, right? Um, so this was just something that we wanted to come to you all and share. Um, because again, doing our part as children of God, doing our part as who God has called us to make sure we release the word of the Lord to you all <clears throat> so that you will know what God is Okay. Let's uh, let's do a quick check in on the uh, New York prepper. Okay. We check into that right now. Someone said a B one, a B one strategic bomber operated by the U.S. apparently has just took off. Ooh. We don't know a hundred percent if nuclear facilities have been hit yet. We don't have any battle assessment, but we are hearing that there were kabooms near where the uh, Isfahan nuclear facility is. And we also heard there were kabooms near Natanz. So um, we don't have official confirmation because remember, uh, Iran is like North Korea. So it's very difficult to get information out of there. Um, But we are hearing of several kabooms in youtube.com slash nyprepper. Um, but the easiest way is to put the at symbol in. Front. Okay. Now he's just telling people how to find him. <clears throat> cool. All right. Okay. So, uh, I guess we played enough of the, yeah, the young man, but, uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah. So the, the Lord gave me confirmation on both of those and, uh, but I didn't get dates. Uh, I mean, other than what they already said. So the one, the first one said, um, uh, before Rosh Hashanah, you know, but, but it makes sense if they're going to release a special genetically altered spider to bite people, you know, then it would re- release it in the spring, you know, which is you know, about now, but, you know, you don't want to kind of try to do maximum damage. Uh, and when I was watching that, the Lord said cyber attack to me very clearly in my spirit. So I think uh, there's going to be multiple cyber attacks. Uh, and, I, and I did look up to see if RT-41 stood for any kind of cyber thing. And there is some firmware that has numbers very similar to that. Uh, so it could be, you know, could, you know. anyway, we'll see. But I suspect fully that the same time period, there's multiple kinds of weird attacks, uh, spiders, <laughs> so, cyber attacks. Yeah, but cyber that, cyber attacks cyber, cyber attacks are happening all the time. Everywhere. Everywhere. My my, yeah. I have an intrusion detection system that is constantly warning me of people trying to get in. <clears throat> uh, but they are ramping up. I mean, the, yeah, some countries spend more about. money. Yeah, some countries spend more money on their cyber attack soldiers than they do on their military. Uh, yeah, what's interesting yeah. is yesterday, uh, 
I think it was like a third of the United States was, was without power. I mean, like all up the center of the United States, uh, yeah. Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, Florida. I mean, there was massive power outages. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me yeah. if somebody's not in our electrical system doing that. Well, yeah, oh yeah. what, what exactly happened what, and what happened over the last two days is um, in, I think, a dozen states, the 911 service yep. was hacked and hit where 911 was not available for anyone in those states for an extended period of time. And I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but that is a very big deal. Uh, that's how the police uh, and first responders coordinate with the public when they see something. And yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, and yeah. Anyway, so we prophesied this as well, by the way, if you check the, the check our own program a week ago, uh, but anyway, it's, it's definitely happening. All these weird attacks, uh, phone interruption, you know, 911 interruptions, electrical interruptions, they're going to continue. Uh, and it they'll probably escalate. Uh, so just so everybody knows it's the second phase of the war. World War Three, the first wave, second wave, first the first wave is all these illegal, second wave is all these weird attacks, very strange, including could be a they they can generate a tidal wave on a coastal city or you know whatever you know there's a great and fiery mountain going to be hurled into the sea. I don't know exactly when, but that's going to do some serious damage uh, worldwide whenever that happens, if it happens while we're still here. Hopefully we're out here, but uh, I think that might be the sixth seal. Is that the sixth seal? It's a great earthquake. I uh, yeah. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. That's when the yeah. uh, sc uh, sc uh, sky rolls up like a scroll and the earthquake. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah which we're not the quite there yet, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're not quite there yet. But uh, everybody should should think about these things and you know try to get ready as best you can. Spiritually ready is the most important. They were not fear mongering, but we do want people to prepare and get you know get right with God because you know this is a good time to get right. Any time's a good right, a good time to get right with God. But now, more than ever, uh, yeah, it's we're coming into some challenging times. Um, yeah, yeah, that's mostly what I wanted to say. The only other prophecy that I want to uh, make clear is that I say that the Lord, the Antichrist, is going to be be revealed in end of September. Uh, Maybe by October, but officially, the end of September, the both the modern Sanhedrin and the government of Israel will accept uh, a certain man, and that is the Antichrist as the Messiah. They'll accept him as the Messiah, and then the Muslims will wind up accepting him as the Messiah. Maybe if, I don't know if earlier or later or what, but uh, we're going to see it all. Right? It's just we're that close. Uh, so it's it's an exciting time to be alive. Uh, hey, did you yeah. guys um, did you see the reports? of a there's a river that runs into iran that turned blood red in the last 72 hours and then wow. they yeah. were just hit by israel and they can't make heads or tails of why it turned red yeah that's incredible that's um, incredible it makes you think that we're already in the 1260 days honestly oh but, i'm uh, telling you yeah yeah, yeah, and then one other thing along that lines is, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to see uh, Planet X too. You know, at some point it could be. You know, I've been talking be about red. that. Yeah. I've been talking it, about it, that. It might, People call me crazy. But it might be after the rapture, so in that case we won't see it. Well, the Lord might let us see what's going on on the Earth during the during the one year wrap. Uh, you know, but uh, it might be sooner. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if it's sooner. And, yeah, it's uh, it's coming. There's a lot of things coming. A lot of crazy, crazy stuff. Coming. Oh, here's one thing that's very important that I want to say, is everybody, you guys especially, and and everybody that loves the Lord, who wants to see the two witnesses, and they might not be two individual men. We discussed this before, but we will know when the three and a half years is starting of their ministry, even if it's not two men. And the reason we'll know is because no rain will fall upon the ground in Israel. Uh, it might be the whole earth. I don't think it's all earth, but you know, in Israel, there'll be no rain fall up on the ground. And normally, they get a little bit of rain every month. You know, it's not a rainy place. It's you know, desert mostly. But uh, uh, there'll be no rain falling upon for three and a half years. So you're gonna within a month or two months, you're gonna know for sure. I mean, the sign is undeniable when there's no rain in Israel. Uh, you know, you can look every week and see how much rain came every day. Really, there's, I'm sure there's stuff you can look up. But uh, so this is another uh, interesting thing that people might want to follow uh, while we have, you know, as long as we well, have internet access. 
Doesn't it say that they have the power to stop the rain? Does it say that they will? Yeah, it says no rain will fall upon the earth for three, for the days of their ministry, which are three and a half years. Oh. It says that the days mm, of their ministry. I thought they. Years. I thought it said they can stop and start it. Yeah, they can do that too. Was, let, me, let me look it up. Revelation chapter eleven. Let's read it. It's uh, nothing like going to the to the source to the to the Word of God. Uh, let me let me get to the right page here. If I can look it up. Uh, yeah, not These are the two all. olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemy. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have pa these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Did you just okay. say turn well, water into blood? Room. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it said. Yeah, that's what we just yeah. had in yeah. Iran. So I, I stand yeah. corrected. If there's if there's no more on that, I'm going to read it in a few different translations. And next time we talk, okay. we'll talk more about that point. But, they can. Uh, I could. They have well, it the says they can. To, for the yeah. for the duration of their prophecy, they can shut up heaven. But okay. it, by the way that this sounds, it sounds like they also have the power to allow it to rain. Which I would imagine yeah, that they yeah. could use that as a means to prove that, you know, they speak for God. I you know, really they can turn it I off really, and on like a. <laughs> I really think that they have been at it for the last few years, guys. I know that that's a tough uh, feat to wrap your head around, but mm. the weather has been nuts. Um, we've seen crazy bugs, crazy plagues, crazy weather. Everything that is listed and in, in everything that they talk about. And if it's not two people, it could definitely be two groups of people. But who's to know what is causing all of this? Yeah. Um, you know, right, it, right. It, again, it, it doesn't say how these things are done, just that it happens. And that river turning red in, in Iran, man, that's uh, that's so you else. want to hear something funny? <laughs> I've joked sure. about this. This is one. This is one of the things that I've put on Facebook to to encourage some good discussion that tends to irritate people. Is uh, you'll know who the two witnesses are because the whole world they torment the whole world, right? So we we right. there's so we can read this when they finish their testimony. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them, and their dead bodies will lie in the street. The great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The, then those from the people, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their bodies to be put into graves. And those that dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, making merry and sending gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. So to Chris's point, I think about, so who are two, two, who are the top two people that have been tormenting those on the earth right now? And this is the kind of thing that I make jokes on Facebook. What if it's Elon and Trump? <laughs> yeah. Elon yeah. Musk and Trump, they've been tormenting the world. <laughs> what if they're yeah. secretly the right. two witnesses and right. they've been controlling yeah. the weather and the bugs? Guys, things yeah. are ramping up. Yeah, right? yeah. Let me tell you yeah. what. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I do think we're going to have three and a half years of no rain over there. But but you're right. In the way it's yeah. worded, again, it, it, we'd have to read several tra translations and try to look at the original Greek to try to figure it out. But uh, still, you may not. And it may not be conclusive. But the way it's worded, in some translations, it does sound like they're going to stop the rain for three and a half years in, in Israel. Uh, but uh, again, it could be just simply a translation issue. Uh, or, you know, but we're going to see, we're going to see, I, I think we're going to see it, you know, I know we're going to see it, and I think well, we're going to see it we, we've got, right away. We've got one more, we've got one more segment we got to get to, uh, because we've been okay. following what Jesus has been doing leading up to Passover. Did you have anything that you wanted to say before we switch over into that segment? No. No, I'm good. I'm good. You want me to sign out, or you want me to? Sign no, out? no, you're, you're welcome, welcome to, stick to stick around. around. No, no, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna pick up these days and uh, just you know be mindful of what what our Lord was doing leading up to his, uh, you know, crucifixion, and then subsequent resurrection, so that we're uh, mindful of what the Scripture says about these things. 
because it's really interesting to see what's going on in the world at the same time that that lines up with what he was doing. Yes. Uh, Chris, uh, did you want right. to switch Head to my screen, screen, Christopher? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So last we left, uh, where they plot were plotting to kill Lazarus. Uh, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. So yesterday, uh, G- there's not really a lot written about what he had done. Uh, so today, this is where we're picking it up in Nissan 10, the triumphal entry, and that is in <coughs> excuse me, John 12:12. 12, 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colts. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Prophecy fulfillment tends to be hindsight, right? <laughs> there's your, there's your, uh, there's your scripture that says, you know, recognizing that prophecy has been fulfilled is <laughs> often in hindsight. Yeah. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of this, out of his tomb, and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason, the peace people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves. You see that he is accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The fruitful grain of wheat. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and I, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves him, anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Whoa. How appropriate is that for where we're at with the uh, devil falling? Wow. Revelation 12, 12, uh, uh, 3 and 4. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. How far are we going to read this? Probably down to there. Okay. The people answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Then Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. That's probably a good place to stop. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. God is good. God is good. Yeah. yeah, that's great to be reading reading that. You guys might enjoy, if you don't already have one, the Chronological Gospels by Michael Root. Uh, he tells the date everything happened to in, in our, using our calendar. And, and he does, also has a date from creation. Uh, and he also has the dates of the different kings that ruled and stuff like that. So he tells you the date in several different ways. I wonder if, if that's what I'm using. I have a document called it. Chronology of the Four Gospels from A-S-C-H-M-A-N-N dot net. 
Okay. Well, it definitely sounds similar. It's probably not the exact same, but it sounds similar. So mm. yeah, it's good. That's good. I'm glad you have one. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. It, it's it's useful. Cool. It helps. To me, I would always wonder years back. You know, what, what when did this exactly happen? You know, in relation to this other thing happening and so on and so forth. So he helped line yep. up the four gospels pretty good. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And he has a team of scholars. Yeah. He has a team of scholars, uh, very fluent in ancient Hebrew and and Greek and so on, uh, that work with him on, on all that. It's not just Michael Ruth, um, which I believe Michael's a prophet also, a uh, man of God. Uh, you know, he's not that he's been correct on everything, you know. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we have to give people slack sometimes. You know, they're our brothers, so yeah. we love them anyway. So. Um, so tomorrow is Nissan 11, and we'll be reading about the uh, the fig tree that's not producing fruit, and also Jesus cleansing the temple and driving out the money changers. And then we have the Olivet Discourse, which is, that's a big one. Uh, that's where, that's Matthew 24, Luke, 13, uh, Luke 21, and Mark 13, which those are the ones where his disciples took him aside and asked him, Lord, when will these things be? And he said, you will see wars and rumors of wars. Basically, look up your redemption. When you see these things, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. So awesome things ahead. Yeah, I got an apple tree. It won't produce any fruit either. <laughs> Did you curse it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a wedding this weekend. So Friday night and Saturday night, I'll be, uh, I'll be MIA. I have a few uh, weddings left this year that I have to complete the commitments to. Um, oh, okay. I'm not I'm not taking any more new ones, but uh, I yeah. still have to shoot the ones okay. that I'm committed to. So I, I do an I extra long huge, show. I have a short well, I mean, testimony that's cute. Oh, maybe a, yeah, I mean, yeah. if I make it, it back. Guys, make, if I can squeeze one I'm, more thing in about trees. Sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm in no yeah, rush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is we we had three or four of the children that I sent the anointing on for different things, and we went around. Me and the four children went around and laid hands on all our fruit trees because they weren't producing. And after we did that, this is like three months ago. After we did that, we're getting like so much fruit we can't do it, can't deal with it all. <laughs> and of course, I don't eat fruit, but uh, you know, it sure is. Everybody else loves it. You know, it's uh, it's like it's like it changed tremendously. We just simply went around and put our hands on the trees that we're not producing. And we commanded them to produce fruit in Jesus' name, and uh, and and then within a week they were all producing fruit, and then and most of them had never produced any fruit, and uh, and now we got, you know, so glory to God. It's just, and I, you know, the few that did produce fruit, they only produced for like three days. Just, I didn't know there's mulberry fruit trees and uh, and uh, the cherry, two different kinds of cherries that grow here, pretty good. Uh, they're not not what we think of as cherries in America, but, uh, you know, they're, you know, small fruit, let's call it that. And, uh, one of them has a big seed and the other has tiny seeds like a tomato. Uh, but, uh, all three of those kinds, and we had about 20 trees and all three, all of them are start are producing all of them just all of a sudden we didn't do anything different. Amazing. Uh, so you need to go yeah, out and yeah, lay hands on your apple tree, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And do it in faith, and I think you'll see results. Honestly, I really That's do. That's awesome. I was really surprised. Two of these trees were a certain kind of cherry, and I didn't think they were ever going to produce, honestly. So I, I, I did it with the children. I think they had more faith than me. Because so, it was me, I'd have cursed those two trees, and they'd have died. But, but uh, because, I, because I've been messing with them for 20 years, and not 20, but it seems like 20. I've been messing with them for at least six years, and they haven't produced anything. Those two, and uh, those, they started producing like within a week. They had fruit. Uh, so, Amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, so I do think that we got <laughs> a special power here in this last day. So, so uh, just if your fruit's not producing, just go out and lands on it and command it in Jesus' name. Believe. If you if you can't believe, get somebody that, that can, like a child. You know, they don't. They, oh, they I believe, believe. You know what I mean? It's so much easier for them to oh, believe. believe. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, that's my yeah. latest right. testimony. So God is good. Thank you yeah. so much. So it sounds like, so we won't be on tomorrow. Tomorrow's a Sabbath. We try as much as possible not to work on the Sabbath. And I then mean, unless Saturday, something drastic happens. Yeah. And then like, Saturday, have, uh, you'll still be, you'll still be busy. So we probably won't be on Saturday. So that means our next show will very likely be Sunday. Uh, so we'll be handling the Olivet discourse and probably the last supper on that day. 
I'm looking to see what my actual wedding schedule is on Saturday. Maybe let's see what time I get in. Does anybody have any questions before we call this a wrap, though? Probably. Let's see. Yeah, all of that discourse is my favorite, too. I mean, that's really what started all of this, you know, so long ago is like when you begin to see these things look up, your redemption draws nigh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that, it is really, um, it is really a great uh, message. I think it's fantastic. Oh, so Saturday, I'm done at 730. Um, I okay. possibly could be back um, and ready to get on at nine. Um, okay, so we'll play, just play that one by ear. We usually yeah, do play, play that by one ear. by ear anyway. Yeah. Um, All tomorrow, right, well, yeah, to funny, guys. tomorrow, I funny enough, say, my... Here. My Friday, okay. my Friday event ends at sunset. <laughs> huh. Well, there you go. Well, that's kind of cool. So you get your, you get your, you get to enter into the Lord's rest after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but all right. But uh, thank you so much, Doctor Thrap, coming on, man. We really, yes. uh, it, we, we really enjoy it's my honor. You. My honor to keep you know it, you guys are doing a great service in the body of Christ so I I really uh, thank you I always pray a blessing over you guys and uh, yeah it's it's wonderful to have a, you know people like you and the guests that you have on they are all good people I love them oh, they're, they're wonderful they're, they're people they're studious many of them are studious yeah. yeah yeah they are many of them are studious and then your audience also wonderful people excellent comments excellent questions so fantastic yeah you guys keep up the good work and it's always an honor and a privilege when i can join you thank on, you sir on, yeah. on your program yeah. well we, we enjoy having you so you're welcome anytime um everyone thank you so much for coming out and uh having this this special time with us we really enjoy the fellowship with everybody but everyone have a great night uh pray that things don't go sideways um over the next 24 hours um pray to escape these things yeah you know, I, am. You know uh, it, I wouldn't be upset if they raptured us out of here i'll just leave it at that amen but everyone have a great night and yep. be blessed okay. and uh we love you guys and we'll see you if worst case we'll see you sunday night and go sign up on right. that website. Shalom, oh, shalom. Yes. Bye, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. God Stein. bless you all. Bye-bye.